When it comes to building the perfect city, it will often fall apart without great planning, especially when it comes to traffic. After all, no one wants to commute five hours a day to get to work. And though it's often easy to start out, your decisions in the early game can have a huge knock-on effect in the late game, which is why understanding the concept of road hierarchy is incredibly important in City Skylines 2. Even if we do have a few bugs causing major traffic issues at the moment which we're having to deal with, and hopefully, fingers crossed that these will be ironed out soon enough. But let's get back to hierarchy. What is it? Well, it's the categorization of roads in a city based on their function and capability. For example, you wouldn't want to have a highway as a local road backing onto your house and other residential areas. Each road has its own function and knowing those functions and how they interact, more importantly, with other roads can make or break your city in City Skylines 2. Now the idea behind road hierarchy is to maintain the flow of traffic which will start with the highway or motorway in the UK. Now these roads are designed to maintain a high flow of traffic at high speeds between cities. Now you're going to want to have a couple of junctions leading from these into your cities with direct access roads because where possible there shouldn't be the option to cross over a highway to make turns. This is going to cause some huge slowdowns when it comes to traffic flow. So instead, use on and off ramps and use bridges or tunnels to cross in order to stop any disruption to traffic flow. Now, highways should then lead off onto arterial roads. Now, these are larger roads whose purpose is to gather traffic from collector roads and allow them to flow efficiently between districts and the highway. Now arterial roads often have high volumes of traffic, therefore they often have several lanes and one of the most important rules to bear in mind with arterial roads is that their junctions should be spread out across a long distance. Too many junctions in a short distance can cause traffic flow to reduce to a standstill and this will back up into your city or worse onto the highway. And when it does come to your arterial roads, they rarely have services built onto them and I'd argue that you don't want any zoning along them whatsoever because that's just going to create a lot more traffic that's going to be stopping and starting on these roads which you don't want. Now when it comes to road hierarchy, each category of road should only interact with the road category above or below it. With arterial roads, they should only connect with highways, other arterial roads, and collector roads. And by the way, if you are finding this video helpful, please do hit the thumbs up. It greatly helps my video get out to more people. Make sure to subscribe as I have plenty more guides planned for City Skylines 2. And do let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments below. Now our next road that we're going to be talking about is the collector roads. Though sometimes these are called distributor roads, these are smaller multi-lane roads and they support moderate speeds but are good for high traffic areas such as the medium roads that you see in City Skylines 2. That's what you're going to be wanting to use for these. Now their role is to connect the arterial roads with the city. Now you'll find services such as schools on them and they often have commercial areas around these as well to serve those local roads. Now these are the main roads in your neighborhood and sometimes you'll actually find residential areas around them but that is more of a rarity. Personally this is where I like to use my mixed commercial buildings. I love running them along the main street and then having the residential areas flowing off from there. Now you can also use parking along these, but in order to reduce any obstruction from cars crossing the road to try and get into the, the car park or to leave it, I highly recommend using the divider upgrade. That should help quite a bit. There does seem to be a problem with parking at the moment, so do bear that in mind when you are um, planning them out. And though I don't want to cover junctions in this video, another thing that I should mention thinking about the dividers is that 
I highly recommend keeping an eye on traffic volume along these collector roads. Now I rarely use crosses where, where two roads cross over one another as this does tend to create a lot of traffic in one area. Um, sometimes it's appropriate to use roundabouts but not always. Uh, you can also consider things like T-junctions and slip roads to help make traffic flow better on and off the collector roads and arterials. Now, what to use is down to a judgment call and other times, rather than using a specific junction, it may come down to the use of the road customization options. For example, the traffic lights or removing the traffic lights so that you have a give way system or for example, removing any pedestrian crossings. This is actually what I do most of the time when it comes to arterial roads. For those, I'd rather have my pedestrians using a bridge to cross or an underground passage to connect the pedestrians to other areas because it adds a lot of stress on that traffic flow. Returning to collector roads, these roads are designed to funnel the residential traffic from local roads and streets to high traffic flowing roads, which is why these connect between the arterial road, other collector roads and the local roads. And it's also very common to have these run alongside public transport and it's certainly worth thinking about the public transport side of things when laying out your city and your, your collector roads. But then finally, we do have the local streets. These are what serve the local neighborhood, giving the community a quiet street to live on. And these tend to be much slower and rarely have multi-lane roads. However, having a three-lane small road can actually be really beneficial if you're wanting to set up public transport on those roads, as you can add a bus and taxi only lane on the street with two lanes, allowing public transport to run far more smoothly without disrupting other transport. These streets are the smallest roads that house the residential area, and sometimes the roads will also be one way just to help maintain that traffic flow. And you may also be using alleys or dirt roads running behind these. However, I tend to use alleys and dirt roads sparingly currently, normally just to connect any services that are out the way, such as the, the sewage works or the, the water pumps. Now, I, I do hope you found this video really helpful, understanding the road hierarchy in your playthrough much better. Now, if you do want to know how to make a profit in the early game in City Skylines 2, then do make sure to check out this guide that we have here. But thanks does go to all of our amazing patrons, most notably our solo clips patrons, James Owen, Fireless, and Treble, as well as our Lunas, the Calamity, Ben, Star, and That Dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is the Viking Brit. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.